The last time we were watching a video in this series, we were looking at the canned foam air seal inside the new window in this old wall. Before that, we were flashing it into the WRB after installing the flanged window. Before we could install it though, we had to flash the rough opening, which was reframed after removing the original window frame. Before that, we surgically removed the exterior foam without cutting the WRB, and we removed the 25-year-old replacement window that was just sitting there minding its own business. In order to get after the exterior insulation and replacement window, we had to remove the exterior trim. But it all started with a window in a wall in a house. In this video, we're going to make this look like this and then we'll compare it to this. The first thing David does is to replace the foam jigsaw puzzle pieces that he surgically removed a couple of episodes back. Because the new window is bigger than the old window, some of the foam can be cut back. He cuts the width down from the inside edge because the window got bigger. Then he chucks the scraps on the ground because he knows the camera guy will pick them up and chuck them in the trash. He pieces the parts back together and tapes the seams. Now he figures out where the trim will end up. I can mark four and three quarters. That's where my trim is going to go down. I know my top is going to overhang a quarter inch. So I can mark five, knowing that five and a half inches of my top trim. And he marks the siding that needs to be cut back. At the bottom, he checks to see if his marks still represent the reality that he's looking for, Four, three and then he uses a speed square to complete the lines before cutting the siding back. Before cutting, though, check for nails on the cut line and remove them if you can. But sometimes you just cut through. <laughs> and he finishes the cuts with a multi-tool. Now, he measures for the trim pieces, and then he goes over to his cordless workshop where the sill and jam extensions are cut to length, ripped to size, and screwed together. And just like it grew there, he slips the extension frame into place. He marks the siding for one last cut, and then he primes the newly exposed edges of the wood siding. Finally, he slides the casing into place and screws it into the extension jam. Before installing the head casing, he cuts a piece of flashing to size and slides it behind the furring strips above. He can't really tape the top of the flashing to seal it to the foam, which is the drainage plane, but most of the water that might leak into this wall will be directed out with this flashing. Because he just opened the wall and inspected the inner layers, he's pretty confident that there's not a whole lot of water leaking in anyway, and this is going to be fine. Because the trim is made with PVC, so it'll never rot. And because the window is perfectly flashed into the WRB behind the foam. No water's getting into that opening, and if it does, it'll just dribble out the front. So with the head flashing tucked in place, he slides the head casing into place using the old putty knife pry bar trick to fit it tightly into place. Screw holes are filled with Cortex plugs. And just like that, we have a new window in a 100-year-old wall that was upgraded 25 years ago. Recapturing the space left by the old weight pockets and window frame, we were able to get more glass area, better insulation, and much better performance out of this 100-year-old hole. <laughs>